Chains are gone. That's what you got in. Good morning, Cedar Grove. I hope you're doing good and had a good week. Great to be here this morning. I just want to invite you all to stand up with us as we go into a heart of worship and join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time to gather together in your house. We pray for our friends and our family who can't be here with us today for whatever reason. Lord, I pray that you just help us as we gather this morning to, to just have our hearts open and ready to worship. I pray that you would be with the music and help us to, to just celebrate what a wonderful, awesome God we serve. I pray that you'd be with our speaker today, be with Pastor Marty as he, as he delivers the word that you've laid on his heart. I pray that you move in your spirit, that you'll touch eyes and ears, soften hearts, I pray, Father, that you would just be with anyone who's been fighting so long, that you would bring them to a, a place of brokenness so that they might know what it is to be redeemed by the blood of our Savior. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We sing Amazing Grace, my chains are gone. Set free my 
hymn for you guys. Jesus paid it all. Yeah. 
Good morning. Glad you're here to uh, worship with us this morning at Cedar Grove. Uh, thank you for uh, taking time out of your day to be here with us this morning. Uh, thank the ones uh, online looking in on us this morning. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, thank the uh, praise team for those songs. Appreciate you guys uh, very much. Uh, Trunk or Treat, uh, October 31st. It's going to be, uh, that's on Tuesday. We usually do that the 31st uh, yeah I j you read my mind you got ESPN uh, <laughs> uh, yeah six to eight uh, on the 31st Tuesday uh, trunk or treat need uh, lots of uh, individually wrapped candy uh, for that night <laughs> we usually run out uh, quite a few times but uh we have a uh, cooler or a tote downstairs, I think against this wall downstairs, uh, to put that in. For the ones that can bring it, will bring it. We appreciate that too very much. Uh, thank our pastor for uh, mowing the yard yesterday. <laughs> you didn't want me to say that, did you? <laughs> well, we appreciate you. <laughs> well, we appreciate you doing that uh, very much. And uh, I want to thank Tom. Where's Tom at, Tom? Thank you for vacuuming and mopping. I've been going to tell you that, too. You weren't here last Sunday, I think, but we appreciate you very much for doing all that. That's not an easy job, this big place, <laughs> upstairs and downstairs. But we uh, appreciate you very much. Uh, the ones to be in prayer for today uh, and this week, uh, Daryl and Brenda, and Brenda is not doing that great here the last week or two. So uh, really lift her up and... Uh, Bill, I think Bill is uh, doing fairly good, better good. <laughs> but uh, uh, Roger and Merle, uh, Roger was here this morning. Uh, Merle did not come with him. Uh, he's left now, but uh, both of them uh, have, s have had a bad week this week. Uh, Mike and Donna, is uh, Mike having a bad day today? Okay. We appreciate uh, Donna being here. Uh, lift Mike up today, especially uh, Alan, Linda, uh, Tom, uh, Harold, Della, uh, Dustin, uh, Sharon's dad, uh, the Espinosa family, uh, Sue, uh, and the ones that will be uh, traveling uh, uh, today and uh, I think this upcoming week. Uh, just make sure they uh, pray that they have uh, safe traveling mercies. Uh, yeah, and, uh, Mike and Tom have them on the list too, and uh, Mike and Tasha, or Tasha and Tanner, uh, on the prayer list too, for today. Uh, safe travel and mercy's back. Uh, got a couple of hymns we're going to sing. Uh, please stand and turn to page 425 for our first hymn. There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in our life of ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife, discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strife, stirred the stumbling cords of gain. 
Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of His grace, resting neath His sheltered wing, always looking on His smiling face. That is why I shout and sing, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, tries for long across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. On the last, soon he's coming back to welcome me far beyond the starry skies. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Okay, page 407, which on the screen, uh, this will be our offertory hymn. 407. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lived. Because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lived. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still the calm assurance. This child can face uncertain day because he lived, because he lived. I can face tomorrow because he lived. All fear is gone because I know And life is worth the living just because he lived. On the last. And then one day 
I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's fire, no war with pain, and then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, and I'll know He Cause he live, I can face tomorrow. Because he live, all fear is gone. Because I know, knows the future, and life is worth the living. Just because he lives. You pray for our offering. Frank. Lord, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to come and see in your house today, Lord. We know you are the ones that can move the mountains in our life, Lord. Lord, you hold the future, and we just give you all the honor and the praise and the glory, Lord. Whatever mountains are in our way today, Lord, we just pray that you would give us the strength and the faith to climb that mountain, Lord. Lord, just continue to bless this church. Bless those that are here today, Lord, those that are not, those that are traveling, Lord, just be with them, give them a traveling blessing. Be with our pastor today, Lord, give him the words that we need to hear. Open our hearts and minds that we might receive it, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you would bless this offering, Lord. Use it for the furtherance of our kingdom. All this we ask your precious son's name. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Deborah is going to do our special today. Thank you, Deborah. privilege of singing with two of my out of the 12 grandchildren. <laughs> they uh, asked to come and sing with me and I just am so thrilled that not only are they my grandchildren but they are my sisters in Christ. And uh, so I, I am just so excited that they wanted to come and sing with me. Um, you know I think about going to ball games and stuff and how we cheer for the people playing, and we kind of sell God short with our praise and our shouts, and I thank you, Rakin, for shouting, uh, because uh, he deserves all the praise and glory. And uh, the song we're going to do today is How Great Thou Art, and uh, here is the scripture that goes that I chose to go with it. It's out of Deuteronomy 10, 17. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God. Now, do you think we need mics? <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure, but I, I want everybody to hear. So, the last time they said I did not sing loud enough. my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou 
thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, when through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think of God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come, when his shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Thank you, ladies. And anytime you want to come back and sing with Grandma, you can just feel make yourself just welcome, okay? That was good, wasn't it? Amen. Yeah, there you go. All right, we're going to dismiss the children of Children's Church. We'll do that before I get lost in doing something else. I want you to go with me in scripture to Luke chapter 21. And while you do that, I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. We've got a lot of people to pray for. We need to remember Brenda, as uh, has already said. We have some other people that's not feeling very well. And we need to remember them as well. Uh, 
uh, today. And then um, we need to remember our friends in Jerusalem. We won't name them, but we need to remember those that are there and uh, uh, that God will keep them safe and use them for a witness while they're there. Okay? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, we want to thank you for this day. I thank you so much for being allowed to come back and worship with my brothers and sisters. Lord, it's been good already. Just the, the music has just been so uplifting. And um, we just thank you for that. We praise you for that. Lord, we just praise you for who you are today. And, and we just want to lift you up and, and give you the glory that we can because it all belongs to you. But Father, now we ask today that as we come and and we worship and we come and look at your word, we pray that you'll be with those that are not feeling well today, those that uh, are sick, those that may even can't be here for other reasons. And we pray especially for our friends over in Jerusalem. We ask that you keep them safe while they're assigned there. Lord, not just them, but all that the innocent bystanders that are there, we pray your hand upon them, your hand of protection. Our Father, be with us today as we try to break the bread of life. I ask that you hide me behind the cross. I pray that you speak through me. I have a lot of confidence this is where you want me to be at today. And, and God, I just pray now that you help me to stay out of your way. And I just ask that you speak through me. Accomplish what you'll have accomplished. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when you look at Jesus, the life of Jesus, when you look at the apostles, when somebody would come to them with a question, they would do their best to answer it. Now, Jesus answered it, of course, you know, but they would do their best to answer those questions. And over the past while, I, I would say over the last few years, but especially in the last couple of weeks with current events, been a lot of people talking to me about, is this the end? Are we in the tribulation? Is, is it this and is it that? And what do you think about this and that and the other? And, and, uh, and so as your pastor teacher, I feel like it's my job, my duty to try to answer those questions if I can. And uh, I, I believe we can from Scripture uh, to the best that scripture, scripture speaks to it. Matter of fact, this question of the tribulation, the uh, millennial kingdom, if you would, because there are two different things, but they happen, one happens and then the other. Out of all the questions that Jesus addressed, out of all of them, this is what is given the most verbiage, if you would. Well, we're at, in, and I want you to stay there, but where we're at in Luke's gospel, the corresponding passage, one of them's found in Mark chapter 13, and the other one's found in Matthew's gospel. And in my opinion, Matthew's gospel starts in chapter 23 and goes all the way to the end of 25 as Jesus is addressing the questions that was given to him. Okay. And so we're going to look at those questions and we're, I'm going to give you five reasons we're not in the tribulation period. Okay. Five. And I'm going to give you three things that we need to be doing. So if you've got something to write with, that's where we're going at this morning. Okay. Bear with me, I've got a lot of information, and I've got about a 40-minute message, and I've got about 28 minutes to preach it in, okay? I'm just saying. All right. Are you with me in Luke chapter 21? All right. We're going to start in verse 5, okay? It says, And some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and uh, gifts. And he said, As for these things which you... Behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left one stone upon the other and shall not uh, and they shall not be thrown down. In other words, all of them will be thrown down. And a little bit later on, and they they ask him, say a master. But when shall these things be? What shall be this? Uh, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? OK, so now that's where we're going to deal with. 
So let me just uh, let me just start out that you have two questions here. Do you see those two questions? Right. What what when's these things going to happen, and what's going to be the sign of your coming, basically? In Matthew's gospel, and we're not going to go there. At least at the time being, we're not going to go there. But in Matthew's gospel, in chapter twenty-four. What happens is, is they show him the temple. They're, 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 oh, look at all these great rooms and all these big stones. And look at all this great, isn't it beautiful? And Jesus tells them the same thing. It's going to be destroyed. And so then they come to him on the Mount of Olives. We understand that it's a little bit later on. It's on the Mount of Olives. And they ask him three questions. When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the age. So three questions. Now, I, well, I, I have to tell you that because i got to tell you about how sinful your pastor is. Okay? When I was in my undergrad, I was taking a, a class on, on things to come and was dealing with this passage right here. And my professor said, out of Matthew's gospel, he said, there's two questions. I said, no, sir, there's three questions. No, there's two questions. I said, no, sir, there's three. I read them to him. I said, that's three questions. He said, on my exam, there'll be, the answer will be two questions or it'll be wrong. So on the exam, I wrote, the professor wants two. So the answer's two for the professor. Then I put a little asterisk, go to the back of the page, turn it over, Professor wants two, que uh, two is the answer for him, but really there's three questions and I named them. All right, don't do that in school. All right, just don't do it. But I'm just telling you, that's how sinful your pastor is. But, but I saw three questions there. Now let me just say this. I believe he answered the first question, when shall these things be? He had already answered them. Let me, let me tell you where, okay? We're not going there. Just ride with me. In Matthew 23, verse 37, this is what Jesus said. He said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which is sent to thee, how often would I have gathered my children together, even as a hen gathered her chicks under her wings, and you would not. Let me stop just a second. That's volition. You understand what volition is, don't you? That's when I choose to do something, right? He says you would not. He didn't say you could not. <laughs> he said you would not. Okay, then I listen. Verse 38, behold, your house is left desolate. So in other words, it's already done. So the question about when these things are going to come to pass as far as the temple being destroyed, it was already a done deal. Okay, it happened in 70 AD, but it was a done deal. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth until you say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. They'll do that one day, but they haven't done it yet. I'm talking about the Jews. I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the Jews, okay? So I believe he answered the first question right there in Matthew 23, and that's why he didn't re-answer it. Go back with me now. So I want you to look with me now. Back in Luke chapter 21, we're going to verse uh, 8. And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, or Messiah, or King. And a time draweth near, go you not therefore after them. Okay, so there's going to be many false Christ. There's going to be many people that come and say they're going to be their Messiah. During the tribulation period, we'll get there in just a minute, but during the tribulation period, there's going to be a lot of people that claim to be the deliverer. Okay. There was people that claimed to be the Christ right after Christ's crucifixion, and people followed them. Okay. So, so we see that. Look at verse 9. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, don't be terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Actually, it, it, it's, the end is not yet come. That's, that's what it actually says. Do you hear wars? 
Okay. Now he's, he's talking to the Jews and he's talking about in relationship to the, to the millennial kingdom. He's talking about in relationship to the tribulation period, but I'm just asking you, do you hear of wars? Every time we hear of a war, everybody gets, they, they always, we're, we're there. It's going to be the end. It's going to be the end. Okay. He says, the end is not yet come. Look at verse uh, 10 and 11. Then he said to them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famines and pestilence and fearful sights. Great signs shall uh, there be in heaven. Stop right there. War. Israel. Since they have fought for their independence, which was back in the late 40s. And if I'm not mistaken, May 1948, I believe, is when they were declared a nation. Okay? But they fought for their independence in two, for, for two years. In Israel, there has been eight decades almost. In Israel, since May of 1948, there has been 16 wars in Israel. That comes out in my math, two, two for every decade. Okay? Now, this is something that you might find fascinating. I did. There's been less than 16,000 people killed on the Israeli side in 16 wars, including the one that's going on now. Isn't that something? That's a phenomenal number. I, I mean, they had, they had all the Arab nations fighting against them one time. And if you take the, the, when they had their independence, there was almost 6,000 people killed in that. If you take that away, that really makes the number phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so there's always war. And I'm, I just want you to know there's going to be war over there. Until the Prince of Peace comes back, there will be wars in Israel. They're always going to fight for that piece of land over there. Everybody. And it's because it's God's piece of land. Okay? That, that is why. How many nations have you ever heard of that God proclaimed, I'm giving you this property, and here's your borders? I haven't never heard of any. Nothing but Israel. That's it. And Satan has been on him ever since, okay? Now, with that said, we're not got to where we want to go yet. Look with me again, verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in different places. The very first reason that we are not in the tribulation period is because of great earthquakes. Marty. I hear about earthquake. It just shook here just a year or two ago. I hear great earthquakes, a little different. Let me, let me give you some information. This come out of an article written this week, USA Today article. It was uh, dated October 21st, not, uh, 2023. It was Diana Pulver that wrote the article, and she was interviewing Mark Benson. He is the global. I love this name. I want this title. Can y'all give me this title? He is the global shakeout coordinator for Southern California. I want that title. <laughs> All right. That, that is what he is. And this is what he said. He said, there is a hundred percent chance every day of an earthquake worldwide. Let that sink in a hundred percent chance every day for earthquake worldwide. Last week, we're talking about previous to the 21st, so it had been the 14th through the 21st. Last week, 150 earthquakes in the continental USA that was of a magnitude of 2.0 or higher. Continental USA. It affected 16 states, including the state of North Carolina. There were 34 of 2.5 magnitude or greater that happened in Puerto Rico, 30 in Alaska, 10 in Hawaii in the past week. 
In the past year, there's been 56 in North Carolina. But they're not great earthquakes. They're earthquakes. Okay? Let me tell you what a great earthquake is. Write this reference down. They, they'll probably put it on, on the screen up here. Revelation chapter 6, starting in verse 12. We're going to go down to verse 17. And I beheld, hang on just a second. If we were in Matthew's gospel today, in Matthew 24, I would be preaching the parallel between Revelation 6 and Matthew 24, okay, because it's right there. It's right in the text. But listen, Revelation 6, 12, and I behold, or I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Let me stop a minute in case you don't know. In the book of Revelation, there's three types of judgments. They come in succession. The first type is seal judgments. There's seven seal judgments. Boom, 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 boom. And then the trump judgments. There's seven trump judgments. Boom, 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 boom. There is several woes. They're not, con they're not considered part of the judgments. They're just woes. They're mixed in there among stuff. We're going to talk about the woes in just a minute. And then there is what's called the bowl or the vile judgments. The King James says it's vile, but the word actually means bowl. And what happens is they happen all at once. They're just turned over, just boom, boom, in rapid succession. The other ones are a little slower burn, and they come out of each other. So this is the sixth Seal judgment, okay? Back in my text, Revelation 6, 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Did you see that? Same word, mega, <laughs> right? Mega, a great earthquake. Look what happened with a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Have y'all seen that yet? Okay, I just wonder. And the stars of heaven fell. They didn't just fall in the skies, but where did they fall to? They fell to earth. Okay? Have you seen that happen? No, I haven't seen that. All right? Now listen to what it says now. And the fig tree cast forth her untimely figs, and she was shaken by the mighty wind, and the heaven uh, departed as a scroll, and it rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Think about that. When's the last time you've seen all the, all the mountains of the earth be moved from where they're supposed to be? Okay. A little different from the earthquakes we have, isn't it? Let's go on. Finish it out because it, it, it's not there yet. Uh, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens of the rocks of the mountains. And said, the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne. And look at this. I want you to don't miss this. And from the wrath of Satan. No. The wrath of the Lamb. We don't think of Jesus having wrath, do we? We think of him some little old smiley, get along person, right? Why, why can Jesus have wrath? Huh? Yes, but, but why can he have wrath? Because, because God poured out his wrath on him on the cross. And at this point in time here, he's, he's been patient and he's been long suffering and he's been waiting on people to come to him and they refuse him and they walk over his blood and they, they, they make fun of him and they they make fun of us and they 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 belittle god and they have they have no understanding of the holiness of god and now he's going to pour his wrath out and that's what you see in the book of revelation is the wrath of jesus christ okay anyway verse 17 it says for the great day of his wrath has come and who will be able to stand are you there with me in in uh Luke 21. I want you to look with me in just a couple of verses to see if they sound familiar or what you just read. Verse 25, Luke 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. Men's heart fell in them for fear and for looking 
after those things which are coming on the earth, for the uh, powers of heaven and earth shall be shaken. And when they shall see the Son of Man coming in cloud, great power and glory, and when these things begin to come to pass, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Does that sound kind of familiar? Everybody's sweating it. Matter of fact, if we read it out of Mark's gospel, it's a whole lot more uh, where we're at. Okay, a whole lot more. So I'm not done with the with the the great earthquakes yet. Revelation chapter 11, verse 13. And the same hour, this is a different earthquake. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city, talking about Jerusalem, fell. And in that earthquake were slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were uh, frightened, and gave glory to God of heaven. The second woe passed, and behold, the third woe comes quickly. And yet again, in the same chapter, verse uh, 19, and the temple of God was opened in heaven. This is explaining what happened. And there was seen in the temple the ark of his testament, and were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail. Different judgment, chapter 16, verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial. Now, what did I say? There's three types of judgments. There's, there's seal judgments. There's trump judgments. There's woes that don't inc are not included in that. And then there's bowl or vile judgment. So this is a different type of judgment. And the seventh angel poured out his vial in the air and came a great uh, voice out of the temple of heaven and the throne of God saying, it's done. And there was voices and thunderings and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as not since men were upon the earth. So it's even greater than the first two. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts and the cities and the nations fell and great Babylon became a remembrance before God to give, uh, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of wrath. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven. And every stone weighed about a talent. That's about 150 pounds. I believe that's right. A talent, a hailstone that big falling. Okay? And they blaspheme, men blaspheme God because of the plague of hell and because of the plague was exceedingly great. So the first thing is, we've not ever seen a great earthquake. Okay? That's what I want you to get in your head. We've not seen a great earthquake. Number one. Number two, we've not seen famines and pestilence as described. As described. Now, We've all just come through the great pestilence of the year 2020. Y'all post a laugh. You didn't. Okay. We went to the grocery store. You couldn't even find toilet paper. Okay. So it was a famine. We had COVID and no real information one way or the other about COVID, but it, everybody's locked down all around the world because of this plague, okay? We've had famines in America. We've had, if you go back and look in history, back in the Dust Bowl, we had famines in. We've had droughts. We've had too much rain. We've had famines in places like India, and there's been a famine ongoing in Ethiopia for years and years and years, but that's not the famine here. Let me tell you about the famine here. Back in Revelation chapter 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat upon him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four, uh, four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see you don't hurt the oil or the wine. Now, that's good King James language, but basically what that is is that's one day's worth of food for one day's wage. Now, I'm going to tell you what. It hurts my feelings to go to the grocery store right now. But it don't cost me a day's wage to feed myself for one day. You know what I'm saying? That's what's coming. That's the kind of famine it's talking about. We have never seen that kind of famine, Okay. This is the famine that's going to be, it's going to come during the great tribulation, during the tribulation 
period of time. It's not the great tribulation at this point. It's this first three and a half years. Okay. So we haven't seen famines and pestilence like yet. Now, I'm going to read this real quick to you back in our text in, in Luke chapter 21. I'm going to read this really quick. I'm, I'm not trying to skirm over, uh, you know, skirt by anything, but I'm just reading it. I'm going to make a comment. We don't have time. I'm, I'm almost down to my last 15 minutes that I stole 10 minutes from y'all from. Okay, so listen to me as I read verses 12 through 24. This is this is proof that Jesus is speaking to Israel. And their fate, okay? Listen to it. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands upon you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and to the prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall uh, turn to, your, uh, to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts. Do not meditate before uh, what you shall answer. For I will give... Uh, you a mouth and a wisdom which uh, all your adversaries shall not be able to uh, uh, gain stay or resist and you shall uh, be betrayed both of parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends and some of you they shall cause to be put to death and you shall be hated to all men for my name's sake but there shall not a hair of your head perish in your patience possess your souls and when ye shall see Jerusalem, here you go, compassed uh, with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. Then let him which is in Judea uh, flee to the mountains, and them that which are in the uh, midst of it depart out. And let not them which are in the countries enter therein. For these uh, be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days, for it shall be great distress in the land. What land? Israel. And wrath upon the people. What people? Jews. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away captive unto the nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down under uh, the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay? So again, that's Though what he's saying right there is just proof, and we, we don't have time to do that, but it's proof that he's speaking to Israel and about their fate. So the next thing I want, I want to deal with is the temple. Now, uh, da, 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 da. look with me at verse 29. And he spoke uh, a parable saying, Behold, the fig tree is the trees. Uh, when when they now shoot forth, you see and uh, know of your own selves that summer is now at, high, uh, at hand. I can't talk today for whatever reason. So likewise, ye, when you see these things come to pass, know you that the kingdom of God is near at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now. If we were to look at Matthew's gospel or if we were to look at uh, Luke's gospel right here on the tail of this right here, this is what it says. When you therefore shall see the abomination or desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whosoever read it, let it understand. That's Matthew. Mark says this. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. And then them that are in Judea flee to the mountains. What it's talking about right there is in the temple, in the halfway point of, of the tribulation period, in the temple, the Antichrist is going to enter into the temple and he is going to set up his image in the temple and cause men to worship him. That's Daniel. That's what Daniel tells us. Okay. There's no temple in Jerusalem right now. That's your third key that we're not in the tribulation period yet because there's no temple in Jerusalem for the man of sin, the Antichrist, to go into. What sits there now? Huh? Yeah, yeah the, the, the big old dome. Dome of the rock sits there now. The Jews can't even go up there. 
Now, I'm going to just give you Marty's. This is Marty being mean again. Evidently, these rockets that they're shooting, they can't hit what they're shooting at with them. I mean, they're, they're, they're killing their own people with them. I mean, they really are. I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying they can't. They're like the old Scud missiles that uh, Hussein had. You shoot them, and you don't know if you're going to blow yourself up or somebody else. You just don't know, okay? If I was one of them Israelis, I'd lock in on that thing. And when they started shooting them rockets, I'd just shoot one too. Boom. Be the end of that thing. Okay? But they ain't going to do that. There's reasons they're not. But that, that's what Marty would do. But uh, not really, but that's, you, you understand. So there, the, the temple's not there. We've already talked about this. But the signs of heaven. We haven't seen the stars hitting the ground yet here in earth. And I know we have meteorites. I, I understand that. That's not what it's talking about here. This is, this is great impacts coming down. We haven't seen the, the sun darken. We haven't seen the moon not give her light. And that's, what, that's, that's the description that, that, that is given to us in Scripture. We have not seen those signs. Okay? So it's not happened. That's the fourth thing that has not happened. Now, I want to talk about this fig tree a minute. I'm going to try to talk where I can not be tongue-tied. Look with me in verse 29. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree. And what else does it say there? And all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see, in other words, when they, their leaves start coming out, we'll see that oh, about April, when their leaves start coming out, you know in, of your own selves that summer is close to hand. Okay, because of what's going on. This has been misinterpreted by many good people. Because what they do is they just concentrate on Matthew's gospel that just says a fig tree. And they say the fig tree is representative of Israel. And, and so uh, what happened was when, when the fig tree spread, spread forth her, her, her leaves back in May of 1948, uh, that was Israel growing. That's what Jesus is talking about. And, and that generation shall not pass away. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He said all trees. Okay? Not just fig tree. He was using it as an example. He wasn't, he wasn't talking about the tree. The tree was not what we're to focus on. What we're to focus on is the other things that he said gone before that. When you see these things happening, know that the time is at hand. When you see the stars falling out of heaven, when you see the sun turn uh, black, when you see the, the moon quit giving forth her light, when you see it costs a day's wage to, to feed yourself every day, when you see these things, know that it is even at hand. Because the tribulation period has started. When you see the abomination of desolation in the temple, and we don't have no temple, when you see that, know that that generation is not going to pass away. Okay? He's not talking about the people that was alive in 1948. Matter of fact, there's a lot of people that's not alive that was born in 1948. Okay? That's seen that, that, that witnessed that. All right. Now, I want to add one more thing here, because at the end of this, in, it's, uh, in Matthew and Mark, they both add this. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father only. So how many people know when that day is going to be? No one. Only God himself. Evidently, there's a lot of people that hadn't read that. Or they don't think it applies to them, let me tell you. 150 people. hundred I know y'all wonder what this was up here for. 150 people, at least, have made predictions since Jesus left that has been Major predictions where a lot of people, this is not just somebody made a prediction in a place like this. This is where it became publicized and a lot of people knew it. 150, at least 150, all right? 
So I'm going to give you a few of them. 500 A.D., there's three men. You wouldn't know two of them, I don't believe, but you would know this name, Irenaeus. He's one of the church fathers. They based their prediction on the size of the ark, Noah's ark, okay? Now, they all died in the 200s, but their prediction was in the year 500, okay, that Jesus was going to come back. Um, there was a pope back in the thousand, January 1st. He said it, uh, Jesus would be here by the end uh, because of the millennial, same thing that happened when our millennial changed. Um, there was astrologers uh, in 1524. Uh, th there was uh, Anabaptists, if you know who they are. Uh, they, they had it. Um, oh, there's one in particular I'm looking for here. Uh, the seven-day Adventists. The Millerites is what they were called back in the day. October 22nd, uh, 1844, Jesus is supposed to return. Um, uh, the Russellites, uh, better known as Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, they, they talked about it August 7th, uh, 1847, 61, and 63. The Indians got involved in it. Joseph Smith, uh, 1891. The JWs again in the 2000, in, uh, 1900s. Um, there's this one particular, uh, John Hagee got ca caught up in this a while back with the, with the, the blood moon. Now he, he stopped short. He didn't say, well, he's coming, but he, he sure did make a lot of money on it. Okay. Cause there's another guy made the, uh, uh, his name was Mark Blitz. He's the one that made the predictions about the blood moon. And like I say, Hagee picked right up on it, wrote a bunch of books and sold them to you. Okay. I'm just telling you. Then, then, there's, then there's a guy, his name is Ronald Whelan. I love this guy for his persistence. I know y'all ready to go home. You just hang on. September 29, 2011. That's when Jesus was coming back. Well, he, he was wrong, so he moved to May 27, 2012. He was wrong, so he moved to May 18, 2013. So he served three and a half years during the tribulation period in prison, federal prison for tax evasion, on the books that he sold and all the stuff that he had, probably. I, I mean, I'm just. And then he comes back to the forefront after he gets out of prison. He's recalculated, and now it's Pentecost 2019. He missed on all of them. Looks like to me he'd hush somewhere down the line. Okay. There's a guy that. Just predicted, uh, his name's B. Soar. Uh, he was looking at the 1988 prediction, and he said the second coming will be between 2018 and 2028 with the rapture no later than 2021. Well, he missed that, too, because I'm still here. What I'm saying, nobody knows. And yet there's all these people always wanting to get on TV and make some noise and make some money because everybody's interested just like the disciples was, just like you are, just like so many people are, everybody's interested is when is this going to come about? Okay? And we don't know. Okay? We don't know. That brings me to the fifth thing, and I, I'm not going to go to no text, but I'm just going to give them to you. The rapture of the church. The rapture has not happened yet, and so guess what? The tribulation hadn't started yet. 1 Corinthians 15 talks about the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 talks about the rapture. We're actually going to look at the last part of uh, chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians. I believe in Revelation chapter 1, verse 19, Jesus, the risen Savior, is talking to John on the Isle of Patmos, and he says, John, I want you to write the things which you have seen, talking about the things that are in chapter 1. John, I want you to write about the things which are, which is talking about chapter 2 and chapter 3. That was the seven churches. And he says, I want you to meditata. That's write the things after these, after these things. That is what chapter 4, verse 1 starts with, meditata. And it's funny. John writes, and after these things, I saw heaven open. 
And I heard a great voice say, come up here. If that ain't a picture of the rapture of the church, especially seeing how you don't see the church on earth all the way through Revelation, all the way to chapter 19 again, I, I, we see it where. Where's the church at in, in Revelation all the way to chapter 19? Help me, help me, help me, help me. Come on. Speak. Where's it at? In, in Revelation from chapter 4 until chapter 19, where do you see the church at? Heaven. It's in heaven at the, at the, we're being judged and we're at the marriage supper of the Lamb, okay? So anyway, and we come back in, in chapter 19. All right, three things, three things real quick. Mark chapter 13, 33 says this, take heed, take ye heed, watch and pray for you know not when the time is. The very first thing I want us to do, and the very first thing I think God wants us to do, is to take heed. We could find that in verses 34 through 36 of our text here. Take heed. That means to pay attention to something very carefully. We need to be taking heed. Listen to the ESV in Luke 21, 34 through 36. But watch yourselves, lest your heart be weighed down with disputation. And that word there means self-indulgence or uh, intemperate living or wasteful expenditure. Uh, weighted down disputation and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And that the day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things and going to take place and, and that are going to take place and stand before the Son of Man. All right, so that's the ESV in those right there. And he says, pay attention. We need to be paying attention to our life, folks. During the tribulation period, people are going to, they're going to be so self-indulged, it's not even going to be funny. But listen to me, we're self-indulged ourselves. We're so self-engrossed. Everybody, not everybody, but almost everybody lives for tomorrow. How many of you work for a living? Boy, not many of you. Let's get some people working for a living so we get some ties. How many of you work for a living? How many of you got a retirement? 401k. Okay. What did what, you put into the 401k for? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Nothing wrong with putting into tomorrow. Okay. Nothing wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to put up for tomorrow. Exactly. But the problem is everybody puts off to tomorrow. I'm going to do that next year. I'm going to do that next week. I'm going to do. Listen to me. You don't know what a day is going to hold. You keep putting off to tomorrow. One of these days, you're not going to be having no more tomorrows. Today, your soul is going to be required of you. And I think that's what he's saying. Take heed that you don't keep putting off to tomorrow. Don't quit. As a church, let's quit putting off to tomorrow. Let's serve Jesus today. You, you understand what I'm saying? Let, let's, let's serve him today. Now, that's the first thing. Take heed. Second, he says to watch. We need to, we need to be watching our life. Now, I told you we was going to use 1 Thessalonians 5. This is right after Paul gets through talking about the rapture of the church. And listen to what he says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1. But of these times and seasons, brethren, what? About the rapture of the church. You have no need that I write unto you. Why? Because I don't know what day it's coming, so why you want me to write about it? Okay? <laughs> All right? Verse 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, when you're not expecting it. For when they shall say peace and safety and sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, now listen to me now, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. But you're the children of light and the children of the day. We're not the children of the darkness. We're not all called up and uh, just concentrating on tomorrow. We know we have, we have revealed truth to us. We have been, 
We've been introduced to the light of the gospel. We've been in, introduced to the light of God's word. We know thus saith the Lord. It don't catch us by surprise. We don't live in the darkness. We don't just put our head in the sand. Listen now. Here he goes. Verse 6, therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep are in the night, and they that are drunken are, are drunken in the night. But let us who are the day be sober, putting on, listen, breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. What is hope? Help me. I know y'all know I say it 10 billion times. What is hope? Yeah, but the, but what what does the word mean? You're expecting. I'm joyfully. The, if you look up the word hope in the Webster's Dictionary, I am, I am joyfully, and expecting something based on something else. For a hope of salvation, put on the helmet of hope of sal uh, salvation. Why? Because that's what we need to be concentrating on, that we are saved. For God, listen here, for God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, in other words, living or dead, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort one another uh, uh, together and edify one another as you also do. And then we're to pray. We're to pray. How do we pray? We're to pray just like what he said right there, uh, that, that we're putting on the hope of, of salvation, the breastplate of love. We need to be witnesses, witnesses of those around us. We need to be a witness, a light into this dark world to those around us. I just watched this guy just last night. It brought me to tears. Because I like to see people come to Christ. That's one of the most amazing things that there is to me. I watched this guy on the internet talking to a lady. She was a young lady, 25 or so. He just starts a conversation with her. And she identifies herself as Roman Catholic. And he says, well, how are you going to get to heaven? You know, what, 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 what is it? How, how, how do you think people get to heaven? You just do good. You, you just... Do you, your virtues, and you just do good. Go to church. That's, I mean, that's what the lady said. And so he goes down this road with her. And he says, what if I can prove to you you don't do good? He said, will you be patient? She said, yeah. He said, have you ever told a lie? Well, yeah. Have you ever took anything that didn't belong to you, whether it's somebody saying or whether it's Whatever. The reputation? Well, yeah. Have you ever looked at another person with lust in your heart? Well, yeah, well, Jesus said that was adultery. So would you say that you sinned? Yeah, I would. He says, have you ever heard the verse, the wages of sin is death? No. He, he quoted several verses to her. She did. had never heard none of them. This man ends up leading her to Christ. Lady, this man. Leading her to Christ. Because she's seen that she didn't line up to God's, what his standard was. Amazing. We need, listen to me, we need to be praying for for other people. We need to be witnessing. We need to have a, a deep settled peace in this turmoil that's going around. Man, people need to see that. Uh, we, we sing about it in the, oh, especially the last hymn we sung about. Man, we sing about it all the time about the peace that we're supposed to have and, and how God controls tomorrow. He's, he holds the future in his hand, right? Isn't that what it says? Well, if he holds the future in his hand, why am I worried about it? What I is to do what he tells me to do. Now, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. I, I worry too. But why should I worry about it? If I really believe that God holds the future in his hand. 
and last on that, in verse 11, it says that we're to comfort one another. We have Christian brothers and sisters that are tied up in knots. They're so worried about everything. And we need, we need to pray for them and we need to be an example to them that God is in control of this thing. Because somewhere down the line, I'm going to be tied up in knots and you're going to have to be a, a witness for me. Okay? So, real quick. Five things, five reasons that you're not in the tribulation period. Three things you need to do. Okay? Five, five reasons, three things. We're not in the tribulation period. I'm standing on the Word of God saying we're not in the tribulation period. Okay? And because we're not in the tribulation period, we need to be busy. Because the, it's still day. Jesus said it's going to come night one of these days when there's nobody going to be able to work. We need to be busy working. Okay? So, with that said, folks, you hear? Maybe you hear, and as a Christian, you say, Marty, I just get so, so caught up in all of this stuff going on. I get, I get so tied up in my life. I'm so tied up in work, and, and everything's just such a, it's such a burden. Well, Jesus says don't get caught up in that stuff. Roll your burden over on him. He says for us to watch, to watch, to, be, to take heed of what's going on around us and watch. So watch, dear Christian. Have you got your eyes on Jesus or do you have your eyes on your trouble? Remember what happened to Peter when he looked at the trouble? He sank. Put your eyes back on Christ. And listen, I know y'all praying, people. We need to be praying for those around us and witnessing, looking for opportunities to lead people to Christ. Now, now, if you're here and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, and there's a lot of faces here I don't know, but if you don't know Christ as your Savior, maybe you're like this young lady I just talked about. Maybe you just think somehow or another you're going to get a pass because you're just a good person. Well, you're not. You're not going to get a pass because God didn't give Christ a pass. So one way or another, Somebody's going to pay for that sin. Now Christ paid for it. And it will be it will be accredited to your account and his righteousness will be given to you. And you will be saved based on his work. Or you can say I don't want it, I don't believe it, I don't need it, I'm good enough. And one of these days, you'll stand before God. And Jesus Christ, the one with the nails prints, the one with the scar in his side, Jesus Christ is going to be the one that judges you. Not God the Father. Not me. But Jesus Christ. And then you're going to explain to him how you've done enough to earn what he done. Won't you come today? Make him your savior today. Won't you come? Won't you come? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we want to thank you for this day. I thank you for the group of people that sat in front of me. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this security and the confidence that we can have in you. Now, Lord, I just pray that What's been said today that people will take it out of here in their heart and it'll help them to, to settle this thing that we're not in the tribulation. We're, we're not in the millennial kingdom. We're not looking for signs. It's, it's, you've been able to come back since you left. We're not looking for anything else to be fulfilled. 
Father, help us to be settled with that. And for somebody here, the sound of my voice, with the only internet in here, Lord, that does not know Jesus Christ, their Savior, may the day be the day of salvation. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. You come. As God leads you. This is Pastor Marty Granger here at Cedar Grove, and we just want to thank you for tuning in with us this Sunday uh, and spending your Sunday morning worshiping with us here. It means so very much to us as we see people tune in week after week. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Today, as we went through the service, as you worshiped with us, if you feel like God's dealing with your heart, on the fact that you're not saved and you need to make a decision uh, for him. We'd love to help you in that process. It's a simple process. You just got to agree with God. And that is that you're a sinner and you're in need of a savior. If you'll call upon him, he will save you. The Holy Spirit's dealt with your heart and you're a Christian and you need to make some decisions. We'd encourage you to do that as well. Now, again, we've enjoyed you being with us this Sunday and we look forward to worshiping with you again at the midweek and next Sunday as well. In the meantime, if you need to contact us, that information will be made available. May God richly bless you, and we look forward to seeing you at the next appointed time.